about every day. We started off first period, the first 10 or 15 minutes, we'd split up and kind of do some extra practices for OA type of test, multiplication tracks, that kind of thing. And then every lesson, typically, we'd start with the 10 groups taken. And that was a quick and easy way to introduce the kids. What did they remember? What did they already know? What prior knowledge are they bringing? Uh, if any, sometimes they surprised us in good and bad ways. So that was kind of a quick and easy way to assess them. And it wasn't overwhelming for the kids. It was something that they saw, just a couple questions, maybe even replied, and it was doable. It was something that they could get done. And they worked at a kind of slower pace and kind of got things going. Um, so then we would then go into our lesson. Typically, we'd split. We'd take each end of the tickets and give them a three, two, one at the top, or check, check, plus, check, minus. And based off that, we would groups and split up into either two or three groups depending on the availability of all three teachers um, and drive instruction that way. Sometimes um, groups vary, it depended on the size, sometimes there were only four or five kids in one group, more of the other, but it was just a way for us to look at the commonalities of what they were struggling with and just group it that way so that we could address all of their needs. Uh, after that, we typically give the same or almost the same extra in order to see did they understand what we taught them, and if not, we could do more interventions, and if they did, then they could kind of go on to the next topic or concept. So this is just one example. This was um, story problems and multiplying and dividing fractions. So that was an example of one of the exit slash interest tickets we used, and they were for both. And you could see the three and the two, so they were um, in the same group in that case. This is another example of how we did entrance tickets. We just gave them a post-it note. It was something that they saw and they thought, I can do this real you know, quickly. So we were actually multiplying fractions, but we figured that the hurdle there would be, do they remember how to change improper or mixed numbers to improper fractions? Um, so we actually based it off of that, and then we just quickly looked at them and grouped them. It took less than five minutes, so we weren't losing a ton of instructional time grouping them. And being able to focus on what the kids needed um, and giving them a little more support if they needed it. So that was just another example. And then this was the final. That was the entrance ticket as you saw the post-it note. This was the exit. It was actually one of the same questions, but it had the challenging process of a whole number. What do I do with that? How do I make that into improper fractions? And then the kids could had to rewrite and solve it. They knew the expectation. And as you can see, some of them didn't solve it correctly, so they had to go back the next day or the next lesson and figure out what they did wrong. And they would explain it to me and just kind of talk about it. So that was just a way that we got them to own what they were doing. And I was just going to add that we're really going to with that. With the entrance and exit slips, the thing I kind of found interesting is my lesson plan never worked out like I thought it would. <laughs> Which I guess we all know is going to happen. But as we use this, I really do think it did drive instruction because Mary Beth and I would lay out our week. And then after Monday, we'd be like, oh, okay, that's not going to happen. Let's back up and let's try this. And I think the assessments really did give us a, a better direction. You know, we, you know, you kind of think you know what the kids are going to know or don't know. And it was a little kind of surprise that I think that's going to be an exit slip. And we're going to go with that.